welcome to my channel physics for students my name is shaunak and we are doing and we are studying real analysis the real mathematics of real analysis uh, i have given it in my in this i button what we started and what we dealt in the previous video so those who have not gone through pre my previous video of real analysis please go through that we defined real analysis we uh, found out the real motivation behind real analysis we also tried to find out how important real analysis is in terms of your career developing uh, data science etc we also studied that why should we study real analysis the real motivation because we give a lot of understanding that it deals with calculus it deals with uh, you know theorems or uh, formulas which were more or less given to us and without knowing we just plugged in those formulas into our theorems into our mathematical class mathematics classes so in the last video what we did is that we defined what is a real analysis all about in layman's term how real analysis is helpful in data science why should we study real analysis most important what are the general topics of real analysis but we should not go by that topic i have given a sequential understanding of the topic so that step by step you understand and you should see my earlier video because i have covered how much i think around 11 chapters of real analysis overall not the mathematics uh, technical part 11 chapters of real analysis these are the sequences if you follow you get a greater result. okay so first here on your screen immediately we start with is real analysis difficult to study okay if you see over the internet and if you search through the blogs and the writings uh, of different uh, you know people who have dealt with real analysis those who are teaching real analysis it comes oh my goodness it is a real heavy stuff i am unable to understand what this real analysis is all about now uh, what will you will i tell I, if i tell real analysis is not difficult people will start shouting on me so i would try to define real analysis in a few steps so that it doesn't cut the basic objective of my video is that you start enjoying real analysis and it should not come as an a uh, very difficult subject oh my goodness you're cracking your head you have sleepless nights cracking real analysis now you see what happens i will tell you when uh, during my college days and when i started uh, started stu studying real analysis is that this is the first introduction towards what we call abstractness now uh, what i would like to tell you why abstractness you need to first understand abstractness in my previous videos of differential geometry or general theory of relativity or metric tensor what i always try to tell to my students is that the more we generalize things from a little bit concrete idea concrete formulas and then understanding the formula step by step once we start generalizing things things become a little bit weird things become a little bit difficult to understand say for example the nokia mobiles if you go back to those days well i am not that old but i'm trying to tell you that those nokia mobiles were very big big mobiles you know big antenna go for the for example the computer the desktops etc now the computer size has shrunk why because it is not much more generalized for example the mobile phone the mobile phone serves the purpose of messaging calling video calling uh, zoom meetings Uh, uh video calls conference calls and most importantly camera and you will see that the notion except the dslr or professional camera the notion of those old kodak cameras have disappeared why because everything is coincided is one single uh, set which is our mobile one of, i would say an indispensable part now why because now the mobile is much more abstract so mobile is no more a mobile it is a life it is is your life force it covers lot of things real analysis is the first approach towards what we call abstractness it is the first approach towards introduction to proofs because you will see what happens is that we were using the general formulas given a formula plug into mathematics we get the result right so now we are going back and we are proving okay if this is the formula if this is the chain rule if this is the rolle's theorem if this is the mean value theorem can we prove that so we are really enjoying and we are really seeing that the birth of calculus where from it is happening so first of all it is the first approach towards abstractness i will cover up that what are the prerequisites so that you can understand 
Second is that it is the first introduction for a proof-based theorem. Now, we never did that kind of a proof-based theorem. I mean to say, not the rigorous one when we are doing calculus or linear algebra. We get formulas we plug in, right? And proving the basic theorem of calculus. So that is why real analysis becomes a difficult study. So my uh, advice would be that understand that this is the first approach towards abstractness. Don't worry. The brain, the mind will slowly get wired to this abstractness because you really cannot see things around. You really cannot touch this watch or this specs all about. So continuity and limit and uh, differentiation and sequence and convergence all those things are no more, I would say, things. They are abstract ideas because you will prove them. And you cannot prove them through concrete things. You need to an approach towards abstractness. So first of all, be aware that this is an abstract idea. More we move upwards towards physics and applied maths or pure maths, we will get abstractness. Let us imagine, let us close down our eyes and let us understand this is abstractness. This is the first introduction to proof, so don't worry, these proofs will so slowly get wired to your brain. We are proving the basic theorem of calculus. We will enjoy the beauty that we can see the birth of calculus. Another important advice would be that don't go through too many books. It really doesn't help. I tell you, I made certain mistakes which I don't want you to make that let us don't go through those books. I mean to say uh, too many books, select one or two books. If you really need a guidance that which book you should earlier start with, do comment in the comment section of this video. I will let you know. But please do not get through too many books. One or two books is good enough to have an understanding of a real analysis. Another thing is that you need to enjoy. You really need to enjoy. If you watch my <coughs> sorry previous video, I repeatedly told that until you enjoy real analysis or the topic, you're never going to solve the problems. So how do you enjoy? Go back to my previous video. You really need to understand what is the motivation behind this, why the, uh, we need to prove these theorems, and then we are going to understand. So here is a quick kind of a recap that is real analysis difficult? Now, I would say no. It is an absolute great mathematics. First, it is a proof-based um, understanding, so it is going to take some time. We are proving the basic theorem of calculus. We are going to enjoy, and uh, most importantly, this is the first understanding of pure mathematics, and you need to pick up the right book. Okay. So this topic talks about the prerequisites of real analysis. Now, uh, in general, uh, if you go through the professor's lectures, etc., there are certain topics which people will say that you need to understand those topics. But that is why I told in the previous video, I have got a surprise for you. And this is the surprise. So in general, if you see that it requires single variable calculus, which is right on your screen, multivariable calculus, linear algebra, and I have written mathematical maturity and visualizing calculus. Okay, but I'm not going to talk about that. These are already known. Obviously, when you're dealing with real analysis, you will be dealing with those things, single variable, multivariable, linear algebra. Mathematical maturity, why I have written? Because uh, I, I don't know uh, what I would say in terms of biological age or which semester that you do. The professor or the teacher will assume certain things. Okay, I mean to say the professor or the teacher will assume that, okay, you know all those things. And therein lies the problem. What the professor assumes or what is the professor's level of intelligence or in, in terms of mathematics, not the intelligence, I would say the level of knowledge, it doesn't match with you, I mean to say the, the student. So therein lies the problem. So first of all, what I would say that apart from linear algebra and multivariable calculus, PDEs and ODEs, what I would suggest is that, first of all, get through, uh, I would say, a general proof-based mathematical course. The problem of real analysis and understanding real analysis is that the brain or the students or we are not aware about what is a proof-based mathematical model. 
Because what happened earlier is that we have just learned those theorems and we have used those theorems and we have proved it. That's it. That's it. So what happens, first of all, is that we gen generally don't know that what is a proof-based mathematical model. That means if I have to prove uh, 1 plus 1 equals to 2, how will I do that? Right. We all know 1 plus 1 equals to 2. Given the result 2, we go ahead and understand. Given the result a plus b whole square equals to whatever, we go ahead and we solve problems. Right. So before even go, going into linear algebra PDs, which is a very kind of a, I would say, a, a general uh, um, a general way of learning a real analysis, my first advice would be understand what is a general proof technique. Here on your screen, this is an exhaustive list. You can go through it, proof by induction, proof by cases, proof by contradiction, proof by direct proof, and all about this. Okay. So these are the proofs. So go through a uh, rigorous, either you can go through a class or you can self-study. But please, first important prerequisite is that you have to go through a general proof-based mathematical model. That is the basic crux. That is the basic bottleneck which most of the students faced. So you need to be aware about that. Now, when we talk about proof-based technique, I mean to say, I gave an example of Bertrand Russell's Principia Mathematica, which went down to the roots and started proving all the arithmetic and mathematical propositions. Immediately once we start doing with the general proof-based techniques, here on your screen, what you need to know. The logical quantifiers or symbols. Uh, my dear viewers, don't take me wrong that I am saying that I am underestimating you, no. But I have seen the students really don't know this universal quantifier that uh, signs, that inclusion sign is a member of, okay, superset, subset, all the logical quantifiers which is used in logic, get used to that. Now, I hope you now understand that why we need logical quantifiers. We need logical quantifiers because logically we will deal with what I told you in the earlier slide, that is general proof-based mathematical model. So in order to use a general proof-based mathematical model, we use uh, logical quantifiers, the sets, and all those definitions and all those things which are required in a set theory. I would say logic, let us not say set theory, it would be logic. So logical quantifiers, the symbols should not come, oh my goodness, it's a heart attack, or it's a kind of surprise, oh my goodness, what are those things? Because pure mathematics, otherwise I have seen students not aware about those symbols. Please get the logical quantifiers under your sleeves. The next thing what I would like to tell you is this one, definitions. Okay, now there is an old saying that do you know the definition of a definition? <laughs> so definitions are something which you need to learn and understand by heart. Absolutely. So when a professor writes uh, something about a definition that a uh, sequence of something is converging at point L or something, you really understand what is about definition. Now, when we talk about definition, there are a lot of things which will come across, which I will cover up in this video. And finally, here on your screen, this is a famous saying of Thomas Edison, I think, uh, if I may have written it rightly, uh, my apologies, that 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. And when I say, you will see that you are seeing a lot of signs and symbols on blackboards. You're trying to get in, get in, get in, get in. Things are not happening. Things are not happening. I understand from maths major people and even for me, it become really a problem at, at the first go, I'm saying. So just don't give up. Okay, so I would say 99% uh, of the entire study is dependent upon how grit how motivated and how focused you are so keep on doing failing keep on doing failing keep on doing failing this will continue and at one day in a beautiful morning like this you will find that things have started to get into wire when i started reading godel's incompleteness theorem i remember i will tell you my experience 
I was unable to understand for two days, three days, four days. I mean to say the mathematical part, obviously. I remember I was traveling on a car or something round down the uh, meadow or lane or something. I was reading that book. I was constantly, you know, sleepless nights. I could not read. Suddenly, I still remember it was very young. I was almost, uh, um, I don't remember, almost 10 years back from now. Suddenly, I remember then when the car took a U-turn, my mind also took a U-turn. <laughs> And suddenly it clicked into my mind. I understood what is the in incompleteness theorem, what is the beauty, and what is the crux of it. I would say right at the bottom. So j please do not give it up. Please do continue with what you are doing. Continue doing that. Continue failing because your mind and your sense will one day become wired. And it is going to happen definitely. I am telling you with confidence it has happened to thousands it is going to happen definitely so this is basically the magic that i wanted to share with you so the prerequisites apart from single variable multivariable again i would repeat is that go through a general proof based technique or a proof based mathematical course do know all the symbols more or less the general symbols of logical quantifiers so that it doesn't come as an element of surprise okay understand what is a definition and lastly please do not fail please do not give it up continue because it is all about 99 percent perspiration and one percent inspiration Okay, this part of the video, I just kept it as an extension, you might watch it or you might skip it, is that when we were talking about all those definitions, okay, we, in the last time, in the last part, you have seen, we, I, I talked about definitions, understanding the definition, here is a very quick overview on certain important concepts, which I think will be useful for your learning. So first of all is this, what is a definition? Now. You can see it on your screen. So I would say that definition is something which creates a new mathematical entity or it assigns a new name. So here on your screen, I have let down, it means the uh, laying down the concept. It describes new terms or things. It assigns a name to something and usually a common structure or pattern. So parallel straight lines, each other, Euclid's definition. So this is what is definition is all about. Just thought that let us quickly go get through because I know that you are expert in that or you might be knowing, but there is no harm, you know, to quickly revise a certain concept. Next, you're on your screen. What is a theorem? Okay, there are subtle differences, very subtle differences. So let us quickly go ahead with those. So you can see on your screen, I would say a logical statement right, that has been mathematically proven. It expresses a provable statement. For example, if I say a quadrilateral is a rectangle if and only if it is a parallelogram with equal diagonals, right? So uh, this would be a theorem. So here on your screen, the famous Pythagoras' theorem. So theorem is something which is proven by logical inference, logical statement that has been mathematically proven. It expresses a provable statement, right? So theorem, I got it, it's a logical statement that has been mathematically proven. Third, what I would like to show you is this one, which is, what is a proposition? Now, in general, it means a statement, but you can look, look into it clearly. A statement or assertion that expresses a judgment or opinion. A proposition is not necessarily true. It can be false, it can be impossible, or it can be meaningless. So some of the examples of proposition, Paris in France is in France, London is in Denmark, okay, and two is less than four. So these are certain examples of proposition. Next, what I would like to show you is this. What is a corollary? Now, generally corollary is a theorem which is less important, which can be readily deduced, or uh, we can tell that a proposition that is incidentally proved in proving another proposition. This would be very interesting. A proposition that is incidentally proved in proving another proposition. Right on your screen, this is what a, a, a corollary is all about. A result from a theorem that does not require much proof. So I have given a very naive example. While on the town, it may not be the reason, but you may stop there once. It can be a good restaurant or a bar or something else. Okay, 
So far, so good. Here on your screen, there is another thing which is called a lemma or lima. I, I, maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. So here on your screen, so we can call a lemma is nothing but a prove, proven statement that is used to prove other statements. So theorem is a result that you're interested in. Corollary is a result that follows uh, from a theorem, right? And a lemma is a result that you use at, to prove a theorem. So you can just go through what is a lemma on your screen, a theorem that, that is proven in a proof like a theorem, but it is not that important. Okay, next thing what I would say, uh, which is very important is what, okay, I have given certain examples of lemma also. Okay, next important is that what is a conjecture? All this why I'm saying because these will be, these terms you will find it in uh, real analysis and other areas of mathematics. So let us uh, get a quick overview. So here is what is a conjecture, a conclusion or a proposition which is suspected to be true, a mathematical statement that has not been proven. There are many, uh, I would say, famous conjectures. Uh, I would say Fermat's conjecture, Poincaré's conjecture, which is proved by my famous god uh, of mathematics, the saint of mathematics, Grigory Perelman. And finally, we come, what is an axiom? Here, right on your screen, you can see all this. Axiom is a conclusion or a proposition which is suspected to be true, a mathematical statement that has not been rigorously proved. So, so these are the things which will definitely come in real analysis because you will see a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of um, chapters which will have a definition. You define certain things. Then you get a proposition which is a statement, and then you get a theorem and a further proof. So all these terms will be there. I'm, I mean, it's so not only in real analysis, come on, this can be in any part of mathematics. So definition, theorem, proposition, corollary, lemma, conjecture, and axiom. So this gives you an overall idea on the terms which will come in real analysis, and just a quick brush up. What we do is that we deal with the techniques and methods of real analysis. I mean to say, uh, how can we come to know or what would be the uh, techniques and methods in which you can learn real analysis. If you go back to my previous video where I have talked more about the topic, these are topic based, I would say hierarchical or sequential, not hierarchical, sequential way in which you start reading real analysis the concepts, the functions, the complications becomes much more easier. Here, right on your screen, this is something what I would like to tell you. So, first of all, you know, you should understand why you are reading the subject. Now, when I tell that why you are reading the subject, what I'm trying to tell you is that the basic understanding that why real analysis is required. Most commonly, you will always see there are complaints, there are grudges, there are dissatisfaction, that real analysis is a very boring subject, very dry subject. But let me tell you, it is not. You are seeing and you are witnessing the birth of calculus. Okay, and that is why you should understand why you are reading the subject. Until you understand the reason, the real motivation behind reading the subject, you are never going to do real analysis in a proper way. So my first technique and method would be understand the subject. Go back to my video where I have talked at length about the real meaning of real analysis. The functions, the theorems, the formulas, whatever we are using blindly in calculus 1, 2, and 3 are being used in a proper way, defined. So there are nothing called unassumed assumed or uh, I would say non-proof based understanding. Real analysis deals with everything which is proved in a proper fashion. And that is why, because it is proof based, it becomes difficult, we are unable to understand. Because we really don't enjoy going back to the proof, do we? We never want to know who our grandfathers or predecessors has been. So real analysis deals with knowing our grandfathers and predecessors. So that is most important why you are reading this subject. Very, very important, get the motivation up. The second would be get an overall idea of the subject. Now here I would like to tell you that when you go through a textbook or your professor's notes in real analysis, okay, don't go chapter by chapter all the details at the initial stage. So what will you do? 
go through the overall idea of all the say for example 10 11 or 15 chapters of the book just brush through them i'm telling you it might sound a little bit weird but it is going to help you i'm making this video just as one of the prime idea is to motivate you to do real analysis right so get an overall idea of the subject why i am doing what is integration in rn what is differentiation in rn why we are again using chain's rule rolle's theorem intermediate value theorem why so overall if you glance through the 11 chapters in a due process of time few hours or a day then you understand okay so real analysis we are going to understand all about those things in a much more detailed and proof based rigorous mathematical framework again i repeat it is a proof based real rigorous mathematical framework so the second point is very important don't sit down and again start reading chapter by chapter and then throw away the book and say oh my goodness real analysis is so unreal <laughs> okay so go through the overall idea that uh, the overall textbook and why these are so so you see that these are uh, uh, the overall idea and these are the things i am going to learn so you get an overall picture and then you start enjoying third thing would be you question yourself i mean to say why this is done why it is not done that way could it have been a proof in that way could it have been a proof in that way so it really gives you a proper understanding that uh, why these things are being done question yourself another important which i have already told that you need to understand the definitions fully don't skip through any definition go repeatedly this is done in the 1 2 uh, three fourth stage so once you go through the entire understanding of the definitions or the overall book and what is the idea you start really enjoying then you question yourself and then you start understanding the definitions fully also i would say if you really have a little bit of time try to learn the history of why those are things the riemann integrals previous to that what it is it's not that that important but you can do that another important is this one that teach your friend now i can tell you my dear students or my viewers that teaching really helps small subjects axiomatic principles the base of the pyramid etc small areas okay uh, suppose you understand understood one proof which can be associative transitivity whatever just a simple proof once you learn teach it yourself i can tell you when i started this channel of mathematics uh, physics about a year back one and a half years back now it is growing and i'm really thankful to all my subscribers my basic objective is that until i teach somebody i won't be able to understand all the understanding is internalized and i really don't know whether i have really understood if you're self learning yourself best thing is that try to teach even you can try teaching in youtube even you can try teaching your fellow colleagues right so once you start teaching those things you will say oh my goodness this is a good question i hope you understand the your friend or your fellow mate might ask you a question which has not gone into your mind so you go back again study and then answer those question a wonderful method i would say for all these methods which i am telling the most important is that teach somebody it really helps finally take your time my dear this is hardcore proof based real abstract pure mathematics hardcore proof based real abstract mathematics but it has its own beauty right so it will take time do it come into a failure do it come into a failure slowly 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 and one day you will find things are going ahead anyway so just a quick overview on the techniques so why you are reading this subject most important go through and understand what is the reason behind understanding and you can go back to my previous video it is there in the playlist uh, get an overall idea please don't go immediately chapter by chapter please don't do that get an overall idea of all the chapters just an overall understanding the question yourself why i am doing so understand the definitions fully try to teach somebody uh, sorry try to learn the history so that you can really enjoy if i have time i will make a, a what you call history of real analysis if you really want you can let me know in the comment box do you really want to know what is the history of real analysis i would like to make a video if you really want teach somebody 
and take your time. These are the very good uh, methods in which you can understand and start enjoying real analysis. Are you feeling hungry? Uh, I think this, this, this picture will make you uh, feel hungry. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, this is called a sandwich method. Okay, this is one of the techniques of learning real analysis. Now, uh, why I give you this picture is that whenever you are uh, understanding a concept or a complicated functions or any theorem in real analysis, what I would do is that uh, take a piece of paper, right, or right on the top, write the definition. I mean to say either definition or what you are going to prove, the problem, the upper part of the sandwich, that cucumber part, right? Leave a blank space and write at the end, write what you want. Again, I repeat, on the top you write the problem or the definition, you keep a blank space and then at the end you write what is that you want. So once you get what you are, what is the definition and then you get what is the solution, in other words, I mean to say you don't have to write the solution in mathematical terms, just in plain English, write it what you want. You will see that the middle portion of the paper will automatically come out. You will be able to understand it. This is called the sandwich method. So you see a sandwich right on the top, there's something middle and something at the end is something. So what I want you is that please practice this method for real analysis. You can extend it further to any part of, of uh, mathematics. Get the real part on the top, okay, then you leave a blank, that means the solution, and you write in English or in mathematical terms what is the outcome, what do you really want? That's it. And then you will see you will be able to deduce. So this is called the sandwich method, a very effective and scientific way of understanding or solving problems. So we come to the final last part of the video where there are many questions in your mind. Is there any way that we can understand the real life applications of real analysis? Obviously, when we are cracking our brain, many sleepless nights, worrying of professors, and oh my goodness, what is happening? Is there any real life applications for it? Obviously, there is a real life application. Now, if I talk of the real life application, we know that real analysis is basically the mother or uh, it is, its root lies in calculus. So if calculus has its innumerable applications in the industry, business, and in our daily life, obviously real analysis would be. Right on your screen, I have given you an overall idea how calculus is being used. So you see it is being used in engineering, medicine, music, very importantly, business and video games. Uh, even Taylor series, as you have seen, as you can see, is being extended to approximate values, solving the limits, understanding asymptomatic behavior, Fourier transformation, which is also there, which includes electric circuits, cell phones, etc., uh, image processing, probability theory and uh, queuing theory, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that in general, if you say uh, upfront that, okay, tell me what is the application of real analysis, it is very difficult to answer. I understand. It's really very difficult to understand, answer, because in calculus, we can so show that continuity, differentiation, integration, uh, area under the curve, you can show that. But what about real analysis? It is so abstract. It is so, uh, you know, it is so weird because we don't have something concrete to show. It is all proof, lemma, and theorems, etc. But let us understand the simple logic. If calculus gives uh, rise to real life applications, then why won't uh, real analysis? Only thing is that real analysis deals with certain abstractness, so we cannot really show the understanding or the problems of real analysis. But if calculus is applied, so it is the underlying theorem of calculus. But what I would like to show you is this one. Here on your screen, these are the other applications of real analysis. I mean, say it deals with approximation of polynomials. It deals with Fourier series of physics. It deals with Fourier series and approximation. It deals with wavelets, which I'm telling you what it is. And it deals with convexity and optimization. Now, these are, I would say, a little bit technical terms of applying real analysis. 
Now, most important among this definition is the wavelet part. Here, you see on your screen, what is a wavelet? Now, it comes under digital, uh, I would say digital imaging, that actually what happens is that wavelet is a mathematical function which is useful in digital signal processing and image compression. Wavelet compression works by analyzing an image and converting into a set of mathematical expressions. At the bottom, you see I have written recover weak signals and it compresses image. Okay, so that means that in case of digital processing, for example, especially for army and uh, I would say security service, you get a kind of an image and this is a blurry image and then slowly the image get processed, etc. Very technical, I don't want to explain. Uh, even I am not very aware about how digital processing etc. appears. So it gives rise to a mathematical function and that function is being dealt with real analysis because these are again going back to the roots. Now this is basically recovering weak signals. If we got a weak signal, how we can recover it and how we can express, uh, sorry, compress an image in any other formats. So what I would like to tell you is that this one, the calculus, the other application and wavelet, wavelet these are the real life applications of uh, real analysis. So upfront, if you ask any, anybody that tell me the application, is it used in this, is it used in signal processing? No, uh, uh, un unlike Fourier transformation, which is used in electric processing signals and phones and lot into Taylor series, etc., we cannot tell directly that this is the usage of real analysis in real life world, but these are there. So because it goes back to the root, it is very important. So applying, I would say, applying analytical methods to partial differential equations allow researchers to study the evolution of a system that is changing in a governed manner. So it, by, by obviously in precise constraints. So let me read, applying analytic methods to partial differential equations allow researchers to study uh, uh, study the evolution of a system that is changing in a manner governed by precise constraints. So it helps in diffusion of heat, fluid flow, and quantum mechanics. Now, if you really want to study further on applications, here on your screen, this is a book by Jian Zong Hong, Wang, and Gardner, which gives you a complete understanding of applications of real analysis. And also, my dear students who are pursuing economics in PhDs, etc., etc., here is another book uh, which, is which com uh, comprises of the real-life applications. Ah, so uh, we, we come to the end of the, this two-series video, right? So uh, let me summarize this part. The earlier summary is there in the first part. So what we learned is that is real analysis difficult to study? Not at all. Only what we need to do is ideas of abstractions. We need to understand. We need to also understand introduction to proofs. Uh, we also need to understand proving the basic theorem of calculus. And my advice is that let us pick up one or two books. If you really want, what are the books? What would be the guidelines? Let me know. Second part, which is very, very, very important, is that what are the prerequisites of uh, real analysis? Apart from linear algebra, partial differential equation, and uh, single variable calculus, visualizing calculus also is important. Uh, I, I talked about, please go through a general proof-based technique or mathematical, uh, mathematical class or a lesson, because this is the first time we will be encountering what is a proof-based mathematical model. Uh, you also need to understand what are the logical quantifiers and symbols. It should not come as an element of surprise. Third, it would, you should also learn what are the definitions and 99% perspiration, failure will come, failure will come, but at the end of the end, uh, end, end of the road, there's a bright light which is shining and that is the 1% inspiration. We also dealt with what is the definition, theorem, proposition, corollary, uh, lemma, conjecture, and axiom because these are things which are going to come not only in real analysis, it would be wrong if I tell that, but in other areas of mathematics. Techniques and methods of analysis, very important. I told you that sandwich method, write the problem right at the top, leave the thing blank, and then at the end, write what you want. Automatically, you will see that the, uh, that the, that the uh, internal part, that is the problem-solving part, 
automatically come. Also, uh, please do understand, <coughs> sorry, why you're reading the subject, get an overall idea of the subject. Uh, question yourself why you are doing. Because until you question yourself again, what will happen, you will go back to those days, calculus one and two. You don't know, you just get the formula, <coughs> you get things done. Okay, so question yourself why you are doing it. If you don't get an answer, <coughs> sorry, you take a step back. You go back and you understand why I'm doing so. Understand the definitions and most important, teach somebody whatever small thing you're learning and take time. Okay, my dear, this is a real hardcore logic driven abstract mathematics framework. So it will take time, but it will come. We also dealt with real life applications of real analysis. <coughs> As itself, we cannot tell you what are the real life applications abrupt, but I showed you that it gives birth to calculus. So we are going back to the roots. Most importantly, it gives this diffusion of heat, fluid flow and quantum mechanics. I also showed you what is a wavelet. This is, I won't say it is very new, but this is an emerging area which <coughs> covers digital uh, imaging, recovering weak signals and compressing image. Two books which I mentioned, you can go one for the economics major, how real analysis is coming to be useful, and another for the applications of real analysis. So that covers my entire uh, you know, series in terms of uh, understanding real analysis because my plan is now to start with the mathematics of real analysis. But most important is that if we start with the mathematics of real analysis before that, we really need to understand and really need to get motivated. I try to follow this model in almost all my videos. You will see in general theory of relativity, I started with why you will learn general relativity, how you will learn general relativity, and then we go into metric tensor, Riemann, manifolds, etc. Same goes with differential geometry. Why will I understand why differential geometry is called differential geometry and not integrated geometry, right? the basic reason, the people around it, and then I started the lessons of differential geometry. Same I am doing with real analysis. I gave you a complete understanding of what is real analysis, how real analysis started. Uh, yes, I have not covered with the history part. Uh, if you want, you can comment, I can put it up. So I started the same with real analysis, how uh, things are, why you should learn, what are the problems, what are the solutions, techniques, methods, tips, everything. And now what I will do is that I will start one by one with the lesson plans of real analysis. Slowly, steadily, we win the race. So that's it. I don't need to uh, extend the video further because uh, the video is getting long, but I cannot help it. I have to tell those tips and techniques so that it becomes interesting. So let me know uh, your comment in the comment section. You can write here editor at physicsforstudents.com so that uh, any uh, further questions, big questions, which is not possible to write in YouTube, I can write it back to you and I can really solve out problems on those. But remember uh, that real analysis, the real part of real analysis is absolutely beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful as today's morning. The sun is up, there is a little bit cloud the birds chirping around is almost uh, 6.30 in the morning and uh, that's it. It's wonderful uh, to talk on subjects which blooms into such kind of a thing. It blooms into kind of a flower. So I will wait for comments and uh, do like, subscribe and do share my channel. I will start to develop further lesson plans and further things into real analysis. Do let me know how you like the video and please stay safe and happy and start enjoying the beauty of, real, of mathematics and let us learn real analysis in a much more enjoyable and happy, in a happy mood. Bye until then. We'll see you, see you in the next video. This is Shaunak signing off from Physics for Students. Stay safe and stay happy and enjoy mathematics.